It was my birthday recently. Yeah, send him presents and shit. Patreon.com slash presents.com. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's where you go. Actually, well, hold on. Let me check the URL. I gotta make... The thing about the internet now is whenever you see something, you have to make sure it's not Nazis. That's not a joke. Oh, no. <sighs> I never really thought about that. That's a bummer. Don't you ever, like, if you see a really good, like, tweet or something, you're like, oh, I gotta retweet that. I gotta check if they're Nazis first. Yeah, I have done that. Yeah. Um, I just check pre- patreon.com slash presents isn't anything, but it could be if you go. And give Austin presents. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're doing a Christmas episode. Okay, cool. You knew <laughs> the way you said that made it seem like you weren't aware. <laughs> no, I'm aware. Okay. So what's Christmas like in the Dice Funk universe? Well, I'd like to think different uh races have different holidays right a different every different cultures different species different planes of reality yeah all the different dudes got different stuff going on Mm -hmm. uh so the traditional winter aarakocra holiday i have decided is called worms giving tell me about worms giving uh there's a lot of there's like a feast of worms which is really just like worm shaped foods you got your gummy worms spaghetti other wormy things breadsticks breadsticks and they're like shaped in an s shape you know like it's wiggling you're an owl aarakocra so you pretty much only eat like bird not birds fuck i'm so dumb <laughs> cannibalism <laughs> y'all you all eat like mice and rats and stuff you don't actually eat worms i imagine most aarakocra do that's a very bird food but you're a very specific kind of bird yeah but i like the festivities so it's not a religious observance for you no i like i like the festivities and the presents and the worms giving tree that is covered with warm oh i can't do that i was gonna say warm ornaments what <laughs> warm war worm ornaments it's hard to say oh okay worm ornament. but yeah so it's like just a christmas tree with worms on it you're welcome so we're establishing that jesus christ our lord and savior does not exist as far as eric coker are concerned but they do love worms and so- <laughs> they really love those worms though much more important to their culture what's the story behind this they just because all the other birds love worms the early it's the early bird they worship the early bird he got the worm yeah he got the worm and then he gave it are you really gonna let me do that to you (laughs) yep i'm glad we're rolling with it so worms giving is the winter holiday on earth but you're not at earth you're in space and space doesn't have seasons because seasons are created by the tilt of planets along their axes, and that's just not relevant right now. But you, Sasha, are going to celebrate Wormsgiving aboard the Snallygaster? Heck yeah. So I imagine there was like a full Wormsgiving feast and exchange of presents, and you guys built a paper mache early bird, and everyone told their favorite stories about worms. And then most people went to bed after a full day of feasting and revelry. When this is set is not clear or important to the audience because I don't know, like two episodes from now, half the team could die. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to establish this as like, oh, many years after the campaign, after peace is established and the universe is saved because I don't know who's going to be alive. But let's just say at some unidentif- unidentified time, uh, you guys have a nice warm giving. And afterwards, uh, it's just Sasha and Jacqueline. Uh, mm. chilling what under the tree where are you paint me a scene uh in front of like a yule log uh but it's shaped like a worm <laughs> okay <laughs> if you think it's worms, you're all welcome yeah you're just gonna describe christmas and then every once in a while stop and say but you know <laughs> a worm yeah um there's a lot of worms on strings around oh my god the worm on a string do you want to tell the audience about this meme apparently i don't know where it came from but I don't care. I love it. There's these like fuzzy googly eye worms on a string. They're great. Just Google worm on a string. I don't know. They just, they're really charming. I looked at them and honestly, I'm into it. See, they're charming. Um, So Jacqueline says to you, oh, she's sipping. Uh, Is there a worm themed oh, no. caffeinated drink she could have in this scene? Worm power energy drink. Is it made from real? She's the power of a thousand worms. <laughs> So it's like two two hour energy because the worms are very small. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the bottle shows like a worm lifting weights. Oh, for sure. Uh, so she's sipping that and she says, this was nice, Sasha. Thank you for inviting me to Worms Giving. Yeah, well, I mean, I figured you missed it this morning. Maybe we could, you'd want to hang out 
tonight. You know. I had a lot of paperwork. Yeah, that's a bummer. I'm very busy. Do you want some worm-shaped foods? Okay, so we talked before about you have spaghetti and you have red sticks. <laughs> um, what other foods are shaped like worms? Okay, this is the part where we have to admit that most foods are kind of shaped like worms. Yeah, sausages. Think about it. Corn dogs is like a really fat worm. <laughs> <laughs> These are some chonkers. <laughs> oh, lot they're coming. Okay, so so Jacqueline's gonna eat a fucking corn dog and drink her energy drink, and she's uh she says to you like, "This is very nice. Uh, do you celebrate the uh, holidays of the other crew people?" Mostly just uh, Ogster. <laughs> Tell me about Ogster. Uh, it's <laughs> you can't get through it, can you? I don't think I can. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, in case the audience couldn't tell, it's Ogre and Easter together. <laughs> uh huh. And it's exactly Easter, but everything is like ogres instead. So it's like technically, we're both professional science fiction writers. I wanted to just take a moment to just point that out. I ain't a professional nothing. You're a professional science fiction writer, comedian, and voice actor, and you've just brought to the table Ogster, a holiday that you made up, which is Easter, but everything is but <laughs> ogres. Oh my gosh, and instead of eggs, they have like uh, onions. Okay. Parfaits, because the layers. But you know, that's not canonical ogre history. Those are jokes from the film Shrek. <laughs> yeah, and? Are, are you trying to tell me that in this universe, everything that is funny in Shrek is true about ogres? I think it's a bold opinion, but I'm going to stand by it. Okay, so instead of the Easter bunny, they have the Easter donkey. No, it's like an ogre with bunny ears on. You just wanted to say donkey. <laughs> he really you did. got me. I really did. What about, do you celebrate any Illithid holidays? I bet they're bitey. Um, Bicoween, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'll accept Beekoween. <laughs> Tell me about Beekoween. You just bite a lot of stuff with your beak. Uh, well, so it's an exclusively tadpole holiday. Yeah, it's for the little ones. And so the the big ones just carry them around, letting them bite stuff, just being like, "This is going to be like when you finally bite in someone's brain and become an adult." Yeah, I like that. Wholesome. It's, it's like <laughs> it's like puberty practice. <laughs> Which is a fucking wild concept. Also, murder practice. Yep. Exciting. Um, <laughs> so, do you think you're going to invite the rest of Objectivist's family? Uh, probably not. Apparently, he has a brother he hasn't seen in a decade. Although, decade means something completely different to him because his planet does not rotate at the same speed as Earth. You know, I never asked him about that. Yeah, you kind of just treat him like a baby all the time. You know, he's like a, a person, like a full person. Hey, you don't know my life. That's That seems like, do you want to talk about that? Should I know your life more? Maybe. Do you want to know my life more? Sure. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, well, you you took the tone, which means that you're not taking what you're saying seriously. <laughs> I know, I'm so bad. You want to take another round of that, Sasha? So what would you like to know? Um, well, which we could just start with, like, how you live your day-to-day -day life. Like, where'd you meet all these goofballs? I don't think I've ever met an Aarakocra who is friends with a gif, or a merfolk, or an ogre. I mean, the size difference the size difference alone between you and Dreg seems to make that difficult. And also, is it Dr. Adler a natural prey creature for you? I don't think so. Owls don't eat fish? I mean, I'm sure some do. Okay. You just never you've never looked at her and been hungry. She's bigger than me. <laughs> She's so sickly. <laughs> Sometimes I I forget how small you are. Well, let me tell you a traditional but non-traditional worms giving detail of how I met the crew of the Snellygaster. Just, just having the two of us on this episode, you know what that means. What does that mean? There's gonna be no, there's gonna be no one to stop this episode getting just like so horny. 
Oh no! We're gonna get so rowdy. Oh, this whole episode is just gonna be like gay rowdy adventures, and it's gonna be great. Yay! <laughs> I I'm I'm just amazed that they that that uh, Austin has trusted us to to be unsupervised. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna end up with like an hour, and he's gonna be like, "What did you do?" <laughs> this this uh, I I. We'll see how this goes. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Dice Funk, a, a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition podcast. You probably know that because we're partway through a season and you've clicked on season 5, episode whatever numbers. You probably know what's going on. I'm Laura. I'm usually Captain Malbec, and I'm here with Lauren. Hi, I'm Sasha. And and we're, we're doing a thing. Um, I don't know what order these are being played in, but it's Christmas time and... We all wanted a bit of time off because our normal recording day was Christmas Day and New Year's Day. And we were like, we kind of like to not work on those days. So we're doing some little uh, prequel things where we're doing some origin stories. And we have been trusted, me and Lauren have been trusted to do one for how Captain Melbeck and Sasha ended up getting together. So it's just us today. (laughs) Which was a very poor decision on Austin's part. Oh, it's either going to be like... Austin's either going to regret this, or this is going to be the most popular episode of Dice Funk we've had, and it will change the entire dynamic. So, (laughs) the general idea today is, I'm going to be DMing, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, an origin story thing. So, uh, the the idea we we, we wanted to explore with this little uh, prequel episode, which starts sort of before the season, is we're going to establish how uh, Captain Melbeck and Sasha ended up becoming a team together um because i believe we made it canon before that this was the first two on the crew who like the crew started with i think we established that recently in an episode so i wanted to ask you a question lauren how how long before the start of season five do you reckon these two met i feel like it's been like a little bit not like a long time but i feel like it's probably been like Maybe a, a couple, year or two? Like, year and a half? Couple, yeah, somewhere in that, like, year and a half to two years. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. I, I think it was, like, there's, there was at least, like, a little while where it was just the two of these two going around space. I I, I don't know if I know what, what happened to introduce others to join the crew, but, like, we're gonna, we're gonna explore a little bit of a couple of years pre-show, these two meeting each other. And do you, do you wanna, do you wanna introduce people to, to what is our driving, uh, force that's bringing us together today <laughs> well we both like to meet new people or in sasha's case cryptids <laughs> um so for this hunt we're looking for the abominable swamp slob or as it's also known <laughs> the ass the ass the ass in the ass the ass often found in florida thank you my home state so um, before we get started, like, a little bit about this abominable... What was it? The abominable... Swamp slob. Same. Swamp slob. <laughs> it, it's basically a little bit, like, Bigfooty, isn't it? Yeah, but swampier. It, it's swampier, and it's, like, it's really chill about people. Yeah, it's like a chill... It's like stoner Bigfoot. As far as, like, cryptids go, it doesn't seem to be too, like, terrified of people. It's just, like... Yeah, yeah, a lot, dude. Whatever, I'll come chill with you. Yeah, so we're gonna have a we're gonna have a little adventure today uh, that I think is gonna start off with Sasha on one of her well well trodden at this point cryptid hunts. I guess we'd be in a Schmorda, since I don't think Florida exists, but Schmorda does. <laughs> Let's go for the planet of Schmorda. Which is like, you know, it's a bit humid, it's a bit of a touristy planet, but it's got like a lot of swamps just just on the outskirts of the touristy areas. It rains a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's so hot. Set set the scene for us on on how do you start cryptid hunting for a swamp slob? What what do you need to set out on this particular uh, expedition? Uh sunscreen for feathers and beaks. <laughs> Maybe a big hat to lock yourself in the sun. Mm-hmm. Some flip flops, <laughs> not flip flops. Actually, the trails of Florida are not flip flop friendly. Um, 
I, I don't know why, but all I can picture for you is just like you go you've got like an extra you've got like a joint in one hand and you're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool to just come blaze it with me? Oh Swap. shit. <laughs> You know, when I started this season, Austin was like, are you sure you want this character to smoke weed? All your characters smoke weed. And I'm like, I smoke weed, Austin. <laughs> this is this is a part of this is a part of who you are that cannot be untangled from your fiction. Good luck, bitch. <laughs> Not you, Austin. So let's let's get some roles in because like I can totally be a DM and do like Dungeons and Dragons type things. Um, let's do. We're gonna use our level five character sheets that are like for mid season five, just because that's what we have to hand right now. Ignore the fact that we shouldn't be this good. It's fine. This is a side story. So, do you want to roll survival, right, to track? Yeah, I'd be like survival to just like see if you can get the track from the uh, the start. Oh no. Okay, that's. That's a seven. Seven. Seven is like not terrible. You've not walked straight back into into central Schmorida. I find some wild hogs instead. I how's, how's about this? You, you you start along the track and you're heading in the right sort of general direction. Um, maybe you step in a big bit of like swampy mud. You lose your shoe behind you, and while you're trying to get your shoe, you lose sense of direction a bit. Oh no! You're not way off track, but like. You just kind of forgot where you were slightly, maybe. Um, My feathers are going to get so muddy. <laughs> uh, do, do you have any, like, any anything you would like to do to, to like... How, how would you start this hunt? You, you're not entirely sure where you're going. How are you gonna, how are you going to sort this? You know what would be funny? Is that this is, like, before Sasha's good at hunting cryptids. Yeah. Uh, so I get stuck in the mud and I just go, help! <laughs> how how new to hunting cryptids are you that you're shouting just, help? I think this is my first cryptid hunt. Oh, okay. This is not what I was picturing, but I like it. I just made it up. <laughs> no, no, th- that's the thing. We would. Th- this is all make-believe. None of this is real. We're all, we're making it as we go. Um... So maybe this is a good point for us to introduce uh, Captain Melbeck. Um, so the idea I have for Captain Melbeck, sort of at this point, is that she is she's out here bounty hunting. Uh, this this was her thing before she was she was part of the uh, the adventuring crew. She basically used to just get people drunk and be like, "Hey, hey, hey, what what you looking for? What what you come here to find? And then once they're drunk under the table, she'll just go get it instead of them. Ah. So. Sneaky, sneaky. Somewhere in a Shmorida bar, someone was like, hey, there's this, uh, there's this really valuable ass out in the swamp <laughs> and we gotta, gotta go, gotta go get that ass. So upon hearing the, the cries of help, uh, what would I do to, to, to come find you? I guess, I guess, uh, survival to see how well I can come track you down. Oh, you're all a twenty. Oh, well, that that's a twenty, a nineteen plus one. So, uh, I I have uh, Captain Melbeck's just gone got out into the swamp. She really has no idea other than there's a valuable ass out here. And the second I get into the swamp, I hear help. Turn around. Help. Oh, hello. Uh, do you need a hand there, friend? My talons got stuck in the mud. I I can see that. Um, let let's do a. I'm trying to introduce some roles just so that like things are happening. What what do, what do I roll to pull you out? A uh, dexterity, perhaps. Yeah, probably. Do a dexterity. Let's let's do some dexterity. See if I can get you out of that mud. Oh shit. A uh, twenty one. God, what? Why don't I get these good rolls on the actual episodes? On the episodes that are like, we're gonna die. I can't die here, this is a prequel. Yeah, that'd be really funny if you did. <laughs> Nothing too bad can happen. Um, so, 21, I Captain Melbeck pulls you out of the mud and gets you up and helps helps dust you off and just goes, uh, Oh, um, hello. Uh, n- nice to meet you. Who, who, who are you? Uh, my name is Sasha Greer. Um... I got stuck in the mud, as you can see. I can see that. What are you? What are you doing out here? It's. Uh, I think we're a little bit away from any of the actual fun stuff going on on this planet. Okay, so don't laugh. Everyone always laughs, but oh, I won't. I won't. I won't. I really think cryptids are cool, and I thought it's about time I try to find some myself. So I was out here looking for the abominable swamp slob. Wait, 
Are you out here searching for the ass? Yes. The, <laughs> the secret ass. Oh, oh, goodness. Thank you, my friend. Wonderful coincidence. Uh, I don't know this area at all. You might be able to help me. Um, I just got stuck in the mud. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Look. That ass, that ass is that ass is very valuable, and I am also out here looking for that ass. So, what? Well, what well, valuable? There's a lot of interest in whether that ass is real or not, and finding out if that is the case. What are you gonna do to him? I, I, I mean that ass no harm. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna <laughs> hit that ass around or nothing. But I just. I need to tra- I need help tracking down that ass, and it seems like you need help finding that ass too. So, how about we team up for a while, see what we can do? Okay, just promise you're not gonna like hurt it or anything. Don't hurt the ass. Um, I, I, no, no such thing. Gotta be gentle with the ass. No such thing. I will be very gentle with that ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we've got two of us together now. What is what is stage one of hunting for that ass? Uh, what 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 does Sasha know about the abominable, the abominable ass thing? I say let's look for dirty laundry and uh, fast food wrappers <laughs> just strewn around the swamp. <laughs> uh, this is an important question. I guess I now have to ask: Does the abominable swamp slob wear clothes? If it's got laundry, yes, and it throws all his dirty laundry on the floor. Is it just like, oh, I'll get to it later? Big mood, yeah. Uh, Secret, it's me. I'm the swamp slob. <laughs> so let, let's do a survival roll together. Let's do a combined one, because now we've got the uh, the the hunter that, can, that knows how to hunt things with us. Do we get advantage because of the power of friendship? Uh, I think we get advantage because of the power of friendship, which is incredibly important because we got a 12 and a 6 initially. Well, I got a 16 this time. And I got a 7. <laughs> okay, so let, let's say uh, Sasha knows more about this whole... Uh, the, knows what we're looking for. Yes. Uh, Leah Moira is just sort of looking around being like... She's she's just picturing a big old ass on legs. That's, just what, just that's what the caption's legs. looking for. Yeah, that's why she's not making any real progress. But let's say you happen to find a crumpled up, discarded hoodie up against a tree with a post-it note on it that says, God, Mum, I'll get to it later. <laughs> um, a clue. So, <laughs> uh, do you want to do, do investigation on this and see what what would it be like investigation maybe insight one of those two see what you can can glean from it all right i'll do insight because i have an extra to that 15 okay for a 15 in insight we, we we know a couple of things about this uh this ass now there's more than one of the species they're out here fam they're out here obviously it's got a parent it knows it knows it knows how to speak common which is going to be useful glad we can communicate with this thing and presumably it's, like, relatively nearby. You can't imagine it would have dumped its clothes too far away from here. It's just like a hairy teenager. Big hairy teenager. Though that does give us the potential risk now of, are we going to bump into the, the, the teenager or are we going to bump into the parent? Cause... Oh no, she'll make us do the laundry. <laughs> uh, do you have any any thoughts on how we can... Improve our odds of bumping into the correct one. I think we should not find it. I think it'd be funnier if we never find it. If we never find it. If we just walk around the swamp and then never find it. Okay, I think this is a this is a totally valid character choice, is we perhaps got close and assumed we were here, but we never once smelt the smell of weed that would have led us that last little five percent and got us there. Yeah, weed and BO. So let's <laughs> Let's just go char- character chat for a bit while while we're hunting. So, um, tell tell me a bit about yourself. Um, is this is this is this what you is this your thing? Is this what you do? To full disclosure, this is my first time doing it, but uh, this is what I'd like to do. I managed to scrape together some you know money from working in Schmarbucks <laughs> to uh, come visit here, but. I usually don't have a way to get around from planet to planet, so it's hard to hunt cryptids. Have you uh, 
Come from far afield. Where are you? Uh, where are you based? Uh, I'm from Seoul. Uh, oh, Seoul. Mm, fancy. Like pay and food is good, but sometimes I get bored, and I like to meet new people and stuff. And cryptids are like the ultimate secret friends. <laughs> so I don't know. I I understand. I think. Um, fellow fellow traveling person here. Um. I I don't know. I've I've never really been one for settling in one place. My my life has been a little bit a uh, little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit everywhere. I um I I'm, I pay my way by basically just drinking people under the table and going and stealing their uh, <laughs> their plans for what they had to do here. I'll I'll go find people who were going to do something worth some money. I'll get them drunk. I'll go do it first. It's a great time. But in theory, people are lovely. They don't tend to stick around very long, but they're lovely in theory. Friend, friends are great. Love to have one sometime. Yeah, no, same. Uh, I have friends online, and those people are cool, and I love them. But sometimes you want to like hang out with people in person. I, I gotta tell you something. Don't, don't. I, I agreed not to laugh at you early. You've got to not laugh at me for this one. Okay. 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 I came here partly. With the intention of finding this ass as a as a bounty that I could claim for money. Yeah, love to find the ass. Gonna love to find the ass. But I also came out here because I kind of like the thought of smooching. Just just I like to smooch different species across space, and the idea of smooching something that is rumored not to exist, and therefore I might be the first person to smooch. It was an appealing concept. Oh my god, have you ever heard of the Mothman? Oh my goodness, have you seen that statue they have in Seoul with the gigant- with that absolutely toned ass? Yeah, see, Mothman is my favorite, and I'm not as uh, smoochy as you, but if I ever wanted to smooch someone, it'd be Mothman. Ooh, ooh, talk- talking of smooching ass, <laughs> ooh, Mothman. <laughs> but yes, I- <laughs> Listen, I don't know you that well, <laughs> but if smooching is what you want to do, I think you should follow your bliss. <laughs> I, I like your thinking. I, here's the thing. That's what I'd like to be doing. I like the idea of just traveling. Tra- a little, a little like you. I like the idea of traveling the stars and just meeting new people. But I, I don't know how I, how I make the bills get paid that way because the only thing I'm really good at doing is getting. Getting people drunker than I am because I can hold my booze and then, well, get get them drunker than me and then go and steal their thing. I yeah, that probably doesn't lend itself to a lot of friendship. No, like here's here's what I'd like to do if I ever got the chance. I'd love to get a group together and just just do friend adventures. Just go do a bunch of adventures together. Do you have a ship? I do. It's uh. It's a little bit small and beaten up at the moment, but I'm hoping to eventually bulk up. I've got a, I've got a ship with a couple of couple of rooms on it. You should get a crew. Go out, recruit yourself. You know, a cool team. I would do this, but like, where am I going to find a friend that also wishes to travel the stars, making new friends? Where would I even find someone like that? <laughs> I don't know. Where would you find someone like that? <laughs> oh look, if. I, I don't know if we're ever going to find this ass here today, but... Do you know anywhere, anywhere else with any other cryptids around that we could go looking for? Maybe just, you know, see how it goes. Um... If you want to flight somewhere, we can... We can look other places for more monsters. Let's, uh, do you want to come check the boards with me? I, I... Sorry, I'm a little flummoxed. Getting asked to go do do friend-style activities with people is relatively new to me. Yes, I would like to do this. This sounds wonderful. Yeah, let's go on the scale net. Who needs that ass? Let's get on the scale net. Yeah, who needs in in real life looking for stuff when we can go on the scale net? <laughs> um, so I know you said we never find the ass. Are you sure that's still where you want to go with this? Or do you want to do one last... Do we find the ass roll? Let's do one more ass roll. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna see if... Mm, is there a different way we can do this one? Um, Animal handling? 
Uh, I was thinking we could either go like animal handling, perception is is one we could maybe play with. I do have proficiency in per- perception. Or we could do something like something a bit wilder. We could go like performance, try and like do a ass dance, the ass dance. That'd be performance, which I also have for okay. Which 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 of these are you feeling? Let's do or the ass dance, which let's. Let's try and do the ass dance. I only rolled a twelve. Oh, don't don't worry. Um, okay, so I got a seventeen. Um, I feel like we passed the ass dance roll. So I feel like we maybe uh passed the ass dance roll. I I want to maybe introduce something character wise. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna take a shot to re-roll your roll. Oh. Uh, to try and encourage Sasha to like. No, I believe in you. You can do this ass dance. Well, I got a nine. Reroll it again. <laughs> Twenty-five. Oh my god. Twenty-five. So, <laughs> the way I like to picture this playing out is like, I don't think Captain Melbex necessarily maybe used her drink reroll powers much before this. I think she's just very excited to have a friend and wants to just be like, no. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it as friends. We're gonna do the thing. So she takes a couple of drinks, encourages Sasha, and do you want to describe to us the uh, abominable swamp slob dance? Um, how how do you attract that slob? I just that's a great. I feel like it'd be something akin to twerking, right? I feel like maybe like a a lazier version of the twerp. Like this is a bit of a slob. Maybe it's a uh, just like shaking your butt lazily. Yeah, just like uh, I guess I'm shaking my ass. Like, like the way old white ladies dance at like Jimmy Buffett concerts. Do, do they do lazy ass twerking? It's kind of like a, an old lady hippie, like usually really drunk, just kind of wiggle wobbling around. I I'm liking this mental image we've put together. So it's very Florida. Uh, we 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 together do the ass dance and just sort of you qu- hear it quietly at first. There's just this. Uh, Is it yo? Uh, uh, What's up? What's up? That's some that's some dancing you got there, gals. How are you? How are you? How are you doing today? Oh my God! Are you the ass? I am the ass. <laughs> you didn't see my mom around here, did you? Because she's been nagging me to do my laundry, and I just, just want to lie down with a joint. Well, hey, I got the perfect thing for that, my dude. Oh, oh, you got, you got some of that, that, that good, that chronic. Oh, oh, wait, wait, what, where'd you, what, what planet did it grow on? What planet did that one grow on? Uh, soul. <gasps> oh, is that some soul stone? Oh, whoa. That's soul is, garden, just. This, this is good. Oh, do you mind, mind if I, mind if I? Yeah, no, sharing is caring. What's it? Puff, puff, pass, puff, puff, pass. Nice. Just Captain Melbeck. <laughs> Indulge. Yeah, she'll, she'll, it's, a, it's not really her thing necessarily, but she'll, she'll take her, she'll, she'll go around once and just go, Hello. Uh I did not think we would find you. Hello. How 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 are you doing today? Oh, am I being the ass? Oh, sorry. I forget that I'm the DM and I have to have conversations. You're like, where's with... Austin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> being a DM is hard, Austin. Come back, save us from from myself. Um Please, Austin. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm cool. I just you know, I, I I would I would chill out with people, but like, it's your mom, there's so much effort, you know, so much effort. Yeah, I hate to exert effort. Also, I'm just gonna level with you. Initially, I was sent out here to come find you to, to you know do a thing that would make money. Forget about that. Um, am I right if I just give you like a little smooch on the hand, just just so I just just so I can say I did? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so it's very weird to have a have a have a smooching scene with myself. That felt very weird. Save me from this, Sasha. Interact with the with the slob. Yeah, sm- <laughs> smooch. Uh, my new captain. Captain, you say? Well, I mean, it's your ship. I do like the ring of captain. Captain has a nice tone to it. Um. Uh, if, if, do you have anything else you want to do? You want to ask this? I, I don't know how cryptid hunting works. Did you want to ask our new friend something? I suppose he's probably got a name. Do you have a name? Yeah, it's Jeremy. 
<laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> Uh, yes, you got any, you got any questions for our friend? Yeah, Jeremy. So just like, tell me about your life and your species. And... Oh, so you know, it's 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 pretty chill. We just you know hang out at home. We uh, are there like a bunch of y'all? It was like you know, it was me, my family. There's 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 Paul. He's He's got an Xbox. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I like how this cryptid is just teenagers. I, I I don't think they're actual teenagers. I think these are like fully developed adults who just act like teenagers. Like I imagine the ah. I I would say like the parent the parents swamp slob is just as teenagery acting as the the rest of them. Just a little naggier. They're all just like very chill and laid back. It's like yeah, this is uh, Grandpa Joe. He. Uh, he made a hammock for himself. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> we just kind of chill and don't like have to bother or nothing. Ah, so that's why you guys are hidden away. So you don't have to like deal with the stress of dealing with society. There's, there's all those things like, you know, cleaning, taxes, taxes, cleaning, bills, work and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You get, you get it. Yeah, no, I hate all that shit. <laughs> Yeah, just like live out in the woods, man. Just like live out in the woods, man. It's 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 just you just don't have to. You just don't have to. Well, if we ever wanted to come back and say hi sometime, Jeremy, could we? If you bring like some munchies, you're welcome anytime. Okay. And like like maybe maybe just like some Oh, could really go for some like some 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 hummus and some hummus. like dur- Doritos and hummus. Doritos and hummus? That sounds delicious. Yeah, you put sweet chili in the hummus. It's just so good. Now is this Jeremy uh, talking or is this Laura now? Ah, it's a bit of both. <laughs> I may I may or may not be craving sweet chili hummus and like things to dip in it at this second. <laughs> I don't know. I put myself into my characters. Um, <laughs> so I, I think at this point, maybe uh, Captain Melbeck and Sasha head back to go and look up on the ship where they're going to go. And this is the beginnings of... The Bastards, yeah. Sasha Melbeck. They're the first, the first Bastards. I, d- at this point, do we, do we think that the name Bastards had come up yet? Or was this once we had a full crew that that sort of came to be? I would think it'd be after we had a full crew, because like, it's like two isn't a crew. It's like we're just buddies, you know? I think at the very least we probably had to have like uh, Dr. Adler on board, because that's the point where it's like, oh yeah, we brought someone in who wasn't just trying to fuck around, around yeah. space. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, we're actually like... A real crew. I think once Dr. Adler joins, that's the point where the captain starts going like, oh shit, I have to be a boss now. Right, yeah, because Sasha's just like, wee, yeet, little cryptids. <laughs> um, the, I, I, the only other thing I kind of wanted to establish while we were doing this about like Sasha and the captain's uh, relationship, I guess, is that like, so this was something that came up like pretty recently. I again I don't know exactly when this is airing, but it was the episode we had that will have gone out by now where Sasha finds out that the captain had been keeping some stuff from her. Just for like setting up a bit of this relationship dynamic. I think maybe we we'll just get back to the ship and like get drunk and I'll be like, "Hey, don't keep secrets from me." <laughs> don't worry. It's, it's fine. I will no, I mean it. Like, I don't need to know who you're fucking or whatever, but, like, if it's important, you know? If it's something about the the ship or, like, our new partnership, like, our team shit, don't, just don't, I'm, I'm chill, just don't lie to me, you know? It's nice to have someone. It's nice to, it's nice to have someone for, for friendship. Yeah, friendship. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, friendship. Yeah, this is a good booze. Where'd you get it? It's it's, it's from my private reserve. You mix some some behemoth behemoth ale with mind flayer mind blower, <laughs> and and then you pour in just a splash of over the hill liqueur. 
Ogre the Hill the Cure. Ogre the Hill. It's, it's for people who've reached a certain point in their life and just don't give a shit anymore. Oh no, I'm a baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, if we maybe like skip ahead a little bit, like I, I think, I think before, um, before meeting Sasha, I don't think Captain Melbeck really used her, her. Uh, re- her redoing things, spirits power much, mm-hmm. just because she didn't really have anyone. She, she felt didn't have the a reason, need. Really, yeah. She never really had a reason, and I, I like to imagine like at some point while it's still just the two of them, they they go out on a, on a hunt somewhere, and perhaps I I don't know what the situation is. They're going out on a cryptid hunt and accidentally stumble upon something very very deadly. The captain ends up having to use her powers. A lot, a lot, a lot in a row to keep Sasha safe. And I think that's maybe where some of the captain's problems with her use of her power started. Because she's suddenly like, oh shit, I've got someone to... To protect. To protect. And that's why... She protects, she attacks. She protects, she attacks. But like, I th- this is... Feel free to like add anything in if you've got any thoughts. But like, the the way I was sort of picturing it in character was... She maybe st- like once Sasha's there and she's got someone to keep safe. She starts second guessing those choices a bit more, and that's where what eventually builds to that keeping those secrets because she's like, I don't know if I'm doing the fucking right thing or not anymore. Which is it's kind of sad, but that's that's the sort of arc from there to here. I was picturing that makes sense. Yeah, have you got anything else you'd like to establish about our pair of characters while we're here? I feel good. Yeah. About what we've done. Also because Austin's gonna kill us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I I think it's gonna be alright. I think he's gonna be okay with this. So there you go. We did a little mini prequel where we established the beginning. The power of friendship. The power of friendship, yeah. So uh I I don't know how we 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 sign this off and stuff, but like I hope you enjoyed Go go hunt down go hunt that ass. The ass. <laughs> ass hunting. Get that ass. Everybody loves ass hunting. <laughs> Let's let's talk about what we're gonna do. So I don't know how you did it with Laura. I don't know how any of these are supposed to go. I'm completely just playing it by ear, and I'm assuming that we're supposed to explain to you our scene that's happening. And I'm I'm gonna be the uh, the, the quote unquote DM, which means we have the power. Austin isn't here to supervise us. Number one mistake on Austin's part. Yeah, and no rules. He didn't give us any rules. You know, so we can do all sorts of stuff. We can make stuff crazy canon right now, which I plan to, essentially. Uh, so this scene is going to be taking place at a bar down in, uh, what was what was the human part or the, uh, the earthling part of Gloria called? Isn't it just like Little Earth or something? Is it called Little Earth? All right, so this is the, mo- this is the most popular bar in Little Earth. Based off of the most popular uh, piece of entertainment from Earth. Uh, so the bar is called the Golden Girls. <laughs> and we are going to be doing trivia here. Ah. So Sasha, you are coming in for trivia night. Because you've, you've heard this kind of like whispers on the wind. You know, not everybody would know about this. It's kind of a little bit underground, but you're, you're all sm- I am very online. Yeah. And you follow those hidden webs. You see the secrets within the secrets. So... You heard about this trivia night, and you're going to fucking be there. In my mind, Sasha goes in not knowing that teams are required. So when she goes in, it says teams are required on, like, the whiteboard or whatever. <laughs> their exotic whiteboard, yeah. Yeah, their big whiteboard. Mm-hmm. And I guess Dr. Adler would be sitting alone. Yeah, she's Because she's like, that's a hipster thing to do, right? Mm-hmm. She's, she's sitting there, sipping on a drink in a, a glass shaped like none you've ever seen before. Uh, but that's how that particular brew of beer can only be served. Otherwise, it's garbage and should be thrown out. Is it shaped like a mustache? Yeah, it's shaped like a giant mustache. Yeah. It's a beer glass shaped like a mustache. That is very 2009. Mm-hmm. 
I love it. So Sasha's going to walk up to Dr. Adler and she's going to say, are you uh, here for the trivia? Well, originally I wasn't. I was just here for the drinks, but I heard there's Earth trivia and figured it might be a fun opportunity. Didn't realize it was teams, though. So are you looking for someone to join up with? Uh, Yeah, that's uh, why I came over here, because you looked alone. Thank you. I'll think about that when I'm sleeping tonight and contemplate a deeper meaning to that <laughs> it's, and self-impose it on myself. <laughs> well, and like, I mean, we're both like from Earth, right? So like, yay, Team Earth. Absolutely. Uh, the name's uh, Dr. Olivia Adler, by the way. She'll extend a hand. Oh, you can call me Sasha Greer. Or just Sasha. Or just Sasha? All right, Sasha. It's weird if you say my last name. It's very formal. That is true. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Sasha. Totally. I know things and stuff. All of those? You know both of them. Things and stuff. I guess I'll take sports then. Oh, <laughs> thank God. That's a joke. I know nothing about sports. I hope there are no sports questions on this. I would assume that a Golden Girls themed bar would not have sports trivia. Uh, you never know. Uh, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but I'm sure one of the girls dated a, a sports player of some kind. That's true. They did date a lot of people. Yeah. They're real go-getters. So I want to I wanna create uh, uh, an NPC. Austin didn't say we couldn't. So I'm creating an NPC who's hosting this trivia night. And he is sitting up at the, the front of the bar underneath the giant whiteboard. And he has, uh, where should he be? He could be any Earth-based creature. What is he? A flump? No, I don't think that's Earth. I think they're from the Astral Sea. We can establish a lot of things that Austin can't change after the fact. <laughs> uh, no, how about he's, he could be a Luxodon. They're like the elephant people. I like elephants. There you go. All right, so it's, it's a Luxodon. And uh, actually, it should be a two-person group. So you have someone, too. A tabaxi. There you go. It's a Luxodon tabaxi and Luxodon with uh, his uh, hat backwards and uh, earphones on. It's like, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, everybody here for Torivia Night. I am your host, DJ Jazzy Jeff Conduit of Torivia. He has a soundboard in front of him. That's the sound effects. (laughs) Oh, my God. How did I know you were going to say DJ Jazzy Jeff? (laughs) I don't know. It just seemed to flow that way. So. It's DJ Jazzy Jeff. And who's his, who's his co-host? I think a lady, because I like ladies. Margaret Thatcherton. The 15th. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. You leave the door open for you to make stupid suggestions of going to. <laughs> I was trying to think of like pun names based off the Golden Girls actresses. And the only one I could come up with was uh, Brew McClanahan. Gru- like Brew, oh, like a beer. Brew McClanahan's good. Also, it could be Gru McClanahan. And it's like a D and D monster equivalent. Oh, see, look at that. I feel like a Zbornak should already be a D and D creature. <laughs> it really does sound like something from like hell or whatever. Oh, easy. Uh, so uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff's actual name is D and D Arthur. <laughs> That's really good. Okay. So Gru McClanahan <laughs> and <laughs> Gru McClanahan. They're the best two person trivia team that's ever existed. And those are our rivals? Well, no, they're they're the hosts. Oh, they're, they're the, the hosts. Ones, they're okay. the ones asking the questions. Whew. Yeah, no, they'd be too good. We couldn't beat them. He's, he's They're literally named after the Golden Girls. What could we yeah, do? He's, he's the conduit of trivia, so he knows everything as long as it's inconsequential to life. So it's a very particular skill set. It is. Mm-hmm. So DJ Jazzy Jeff, who again, real name, D&D author, uh, is going to... Uh, state all the rules and we're not going to go through them because the rules are boring but essentially it just amounts to no cheating but then he's going to announce what the prize is he's like and the prize for winning this earth trivia night is going to be your very own spaceship (laughs) 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 don't ask questions what I said, don't ask questions. That's what we're here to do, to ask you questions. Who's ready for question one? Woo, I'm the crowd, woo. <laughs> I, like, I like all the enthusiasm. It's such an excited it's crowd. Like a yeah, there's like people in the back. 
Yeah, there's there's thousands. Well, it's the most popular bar in all of Little Earth. So I thought it was small and hipstery. It's both. It's it, Is it, it breaks like a the laws of physics. Yeah, it's it it it's it's both it's the a most bardist. popular yet also very small and in the wall kind of. You know? Did you hear that really bad pun I just made? No, go for it again. I said it's a bardis because it's a bar and Shit, a tardis. That's good, actually, you can think about that later tonight. Mm. I I will after I think about how I'm alone. I'm gonna think about the bardis. Yep, and it's gonna make me cry, and then I'm gonna laugh. It's gonna be real. <laughs> Roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> Real nice uh, emotion sandwich there. Jesse Jeff is going to turn to uh, Gruel McClanahan and say, uh, why don't you give the first question? Okay, I gotta make up a voice. It's fine. I believe in you. I was gonna do a southern drawl. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't think of anything more perfect. So the first question <laughs> is what? musical instrument company was named after the tree in this region of Lorelei. Ding, 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 ding. That was me hitting... That was... Uh, okay. Wait, trivia, <laughs> how does that work? I don't think that's how trivia works at bars. I think, I, I think everyone just writes it down on a piece of paper and they title it at the end. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Alex Trebek is there, and he is—he's uh, going to be getting sassy as he's. He as he always gets, gets sassy. Yeah, so uh, he's going to be sassy towards your answer if it's wrong. But uh, I'm the sweet Sasha was the one who buzzed in, so Sasha knows the answer. What is Spira? Oh, you know about music then? I just uh, know about stuff, and sometimes music. Did you study on Earth or? Uh, yeah, that's where I'm from. I'm a bird. My dad was a bird. My mom was a bird. What'd you study? Cryptozoology. Interesting. I haven't heard many uh, jump into that field before. Yeah, my parents were not thrilled about that. They wanted me to go to pharmacy school. We live to disappoint our parents. Is that not the case? Yeah, it's totally fine. I don't think about it. All the time. I understand that. Well, that's great. I think that's uh, you seem confident. So I think I think that that's probably the answer on that. Then. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So DJ Jazzy Jeff is going to pop in. He's gonna be like, "Okay, pencils and space pens down. It's time for your next question." <laughs> Everybody here remembers General Blood Maw for his daring escapades during the Illithid War, where he crashed a spaceship into an Illithid cruiser, took out everyone on board, and sacrificed himself to destroy the entire cruiser. However, not as many people remember that when he came back from the Abyss, he started up a metal band. What was that metal band's name? And Olivia is going to just write down Death Sandwich. Oh, fuck. I love a death sandwich. She says, uh, have you ever heard them before? They're actually a very good band. Uh, no, but it involves death and food, which are like my two favorite things. They had a ton of classics, by the way. Hit after hit. Uh, there there was... Murder pastrami. Th- there was hate mustard. There was o- open-faced carnage. Uh, B.O. Bleed. <laughs> Blood relish. Blood uh, relish is really good. Pastrami on die. Oh, fuck. Uh, f- Five dollar foot through lungs. <laughs> There was uh the broken leg and gr- <laughs> the broken You've been leg. Thinking about this, I have a whole list. The broken leg and cheese, uh, roast grief, your last bitch cheese take, uh, rip buddy, gorned beef, uh, peanut butter and heli, uh, pimento memento, R.I.P., which of course stands for rested po boy, and of course their foreign crossover hit empanslada. <laughs> they had. They're they're an amazing band, the likes of which we'll never see again. Wow, you really know a lot about music. I tend to like the underground stuff. It's just what I found myself drawn to. Oh, that's why you're here at Little Earth's smallest and also largest bar. (laughs) Smallest, most popular bar, yes. The Golden Girls. I like the aesthetic and their mustache beers. And their assortment of cheesecake cocktails. Yes, those are the best things about the best part about this place. And of course, it's trivia nights, which give out spaceships regularly. 
I enjoy that. Yeah, that's not an untenable prize. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that about them. So Groom McClanahan is going to say the next question. This mythic figure supposedly brought down the alleged rainbow barrier in the city of Alium. <laughs> Second Final Jeopardy. They play music. They, yeah. They're really running copyright infringement at this point. <laughs> And Sasha's going to write down, who is Theodora? I've heard many people thought that Dora was just a myth. Um, I think she was real. I'd have to assume so. With cryptozoology as your background, I feel like you're, you're not one to take the truth at face value. Uh, sometimes you need to look a little deeper and not just take whatever the government says is the truth. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Olivia's already like, uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to let you handle the rest of these questions. I'm going to head out of here, you know. Oh, just, yeah. Suddenly I got a call on my uh, my pager that I have to get out of here. She's on to me. Run. <laughs> uh, so DJ Jazzy Jeff is going to pop in with the next question. He's going to be like, all right. So many of you know about the great green forest underneath the earth on earth. Many of whom believe is actually the result of a druidic cult cultivating a grand ritual to bring the earth underneath the earth. Why is this great green forest actually in a cave system deep underneath Ilium? And Olivia is going to write down that the real answer that there is a giant forest in a cave system is because... There was a woman with wild magic whose kids got lost in the caves and she had to cast a spell to find them and she accidentally created an entire forest. Aw, that's so wholesome. It is. And it also doesn't involve a cult of druids creating a, a ritual to a dark god. I didn't get onto all that stuff, but there was a whole dark god ritual of aspect to Cause, it. Cause, what are those? Yeah, well, yeah, they're all dead now, so. That sucks. I wonder who did that. <laughs> I hope Austin, the entire time this is happening, it's just like his hands, like his face is in his hands, and he's just long. Like, I hope he can almost, I, I don't know how it'd be possible, but like underneath the track of this segment is just one long, exhausted sigh. Like, Wail of anguish? Uh, no, okay. I don't want to think he's he's hurting. I just want him to be very, very tired. I don't want him to feel pain, but I do want him to be exhausted. <laughs> I wanted to be like, oh, why did I give them this power? <laughs> the next question is, this healthcare giant started the first widespread use of medical marijuana on Earth. I like those little dingy bells, just to amuse me. Yeah, no, she, there's a ding bell at the table to, um, yeah, just it was there for children and now it's there for you. But the answer is, uh, who is Lenora <laughs> Desmond? So... If Lenore Desmond is the reason that weed is legal throughout all of Earth, what do they do? Like, they have to have, like, named something weed related about her. There's got to be, like, a Lenora strain or something. Like Cat Kush or. Or just DJ Miavelis. <laughs> you said no immediately when I suggested it. Uh, yeah, it's Cat Kush that I came up with and not Chris. So DJ Jazzy Jeff is going to pipe in. He's going to be like, all right, everybody, we have come to the final question. And the lights go off. And he's like, this may be the most important question of your lives. Which franchise, movie franchise, based off of a real, and dare I say, now officially canon person in this universe they are real you can't deny it is the highest grossing movie franchise of all time please tell me <laughs> olivia is to say oh well of course it's the skateboarding muscle shark sharko polo <laughs> sharko polo i love that guy oh i love him all of his movies he has so many like uh sharko goes to the beach uh, Sharko goes to the park. Sharko goes to Congress. Sharko goes to jail. Sharko escapes from jail. President Sharko. 
Uh, Sharko and Bill Webb versus the World Crime League. Now, Bill Webb, <laughs> who is also a canon character in this universe, is a real thing, is a duck who is a detective. And together, the two of them fought against the World Crime League. Uh, there was also Sharko in space. Uh, Sharko takes space Manhattan. Sharko after dark, the sexy one. Uh, Sharko and Bill Webb save the holidays. And of course, the classic follow up Sharko and Bill Webb ruin the holidays. Ah. Uh, Sharko ruins everything. And of course, the, the magnum opus, the, the one where all the Sharko plot lines kind of came together. And it was the, the end game movie where Sharko dies and all these plot lines kind of come to a close. Sharko goes to the mall. And the thrilling stage adaptation, Sundays in the Park with Sharko. I also loved his coloring books, Find Me Sharko. Uh, Sharko Likes Blue was a good one. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He had a, sp- <laughs> he had a smoothie blend. Uh, it was orange with vitamin Sharko. Just a real merchandising powerhouse. <laughs> he had his, his famous appetizers, Mozzarella Sticks. Was a good one. <laughs> Jacopino was... poppers. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just want to stress, though. Again, <laughs> this is of course a canon character in Dice Funk lore. Now is that there was a giant muscle shark who skateboarded around, who became the most. Does he wear sunglasses? Movie Please. franchise. <laughs> yeah, of course he did. And he had a hat and everything. He was straight out of the nineties. Except he's a big. He's like the Beowulf of this universe. I just really want to establish that Sharko was a real person, as was Bill Webb. These things happened. You gave me power, Austin. <laughs> All right. You know, I I had to spend a lot of time in bed as a kid, so I uh, I saw a lot of those movies. Oh, that's a bummer. It's all right. I think I've managed to do all right for myself since then. Totally. Uh, this is not uncomfortable. Mask, what is it that you do, Sasha? Um, I'm an adventurer. Mm-hmm. Really? And where do you? What kind of adventuring things do you do? We like try to help people. Sometimes we kiss people, we hunt for cryptids, just travel around doing stuff. We help where we can, but it's just me and the captain right now. It's kind of rough. We have kind of a small ship, but we make do. Helping people is an extremely admirable goal. Yeah, um, sometimes when I'm trying to help people, I can get a little destructive. But I'm working on that. Sometimes it helps to have someone there who can patch holes in things. Yeah, we could use that. We got a lot of holes. What do you do? I am freelance now, you could say. Yeah, but like, what? Well, I introduced myself to you as Dr. Olivia Adler. Yeah, but you can be a doctor of a lot of stuff. A medical doctor then, dear. Oh, so you (laughs) patch holes. In people, sure. Well, that's helpful. Uh, Have you ever thought of joining a crew, maybe? It's something I could consider, I think. Think about it this way. If we win, we can't split a ship in half. We could. I mean, there is the old... (laughs) King King Sharkleman plan, where he said, if you truly love this ship... I'm going to split it in half, and you can both have half. But the person who really loves the ship would just let the other person have it so it could stay in one piece. Ah. That gets King David, actually. <laughs> it's not even King Solomon like that shitty pun was. Yeah, King Sharkovin. He was King Sharkovin. And in the this King version. Shark There's Bible. long, prestigious lines of sharks. <laughs> yeah. The captain is cool. She's nice. <laughs> I'm there, and, like, you could travel places and look for more hipster bars. That's what you're into, right? I would appreciate getting to see more of this system. I've been able to see such uh, small amounts of it so far. So if your captain would have me, I think I could uh, spend some time amongst your crew. She's not super picky, just, like, don't be a dick. I'd like to think I meet those qualifications. Yeah, you just gotta get your uh, adventure license. Well, I do have a license to 
sort of practice here. I, I have the necessary credentials. Yeah, I feel like if you're a doctor, you could probably get your license pretty easy. Do they? Is that their thing? Well, I mean, there's just never enough of them, you know? Yeah, that's always been the, the big problem in space. A lot of fighting, not a lot of healing. Indeed. And you guys in the back win the spaceship! Burr, 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 burr. Whoa. <laughs> it's T Birth. <laughs> and here to give your spaceship to you is the one and only Ambassador Respect. Oh, hello, everybody. I'm just here for tra- Oh, my God. You just want to do the goddamn <laughs> Matt Hatter voice. It's a simple the trail mix. Congratulations, Ed. He's just he's just cycling through the bar, shaking hands and eating trail mix off the of bar tables and then leaves. All right. What a cameo, everybody. <laughs> Ambassador Respect. Our ship now. <laughs> everybody clap. Please clap. Well, uh, we have a ship now, and based off the picture they just handed us, because that's how this scene has to work, is we have to have be able to visually see it. Uh, what what do you think it kind of looks like? Um, it kind of looks like this weird tentacle bird dragon cryptid thing. It's called a Snallygaster. Oh, really? That's interesting. You know, I've always thought, and I think Austin should just slowly fade us out into nothingness, and that's the scene, because I do 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 watermelon igloo. A gift that keeps on giving. Now, the audience gets to wonder, when are we going to get to see D&D Arthur and <laughs> Gru McClanahan again? The Titans of t- uh, Trivia. Maybe we'll see them in a future adventure, guys. You know, just stay tuned. So wait, you're telling me you met Captain Melbeck while you were both searching for the same cryptid, and you met Dr. Adler in a trivia contest where you won the Snallygaster? Yeah, and there were only six questions. That seems highly unlikely, given that the Snallygaster is enormous. I mean, it has a mech garage. I mean, it has to be worth a fortune. Hey man, I didn't question it. (laughs) You don't think perhaps they pawned it off on you as some part of... As part of, like, a money laundering scheme, or maybe it's haunted or something? That's their problem, not mine. I have a cool ship now. It's extremely your problem if it's haunted, Sasha, but I I think maybe... Do you think it's haunted? Where did you see a ghost? Do you want to go on a ghost hunt? (laughs) Yeah, let's go on a traditional Wormsgiving Day ghost hunt. Wait, but how did you all meet Dreg? He wasn't in any either of your stories. Oh, yeah, we just kind of scooped him up someplace. Scooped him up someplace? Like he was in a claw machine? No, like he was hitchhiking on an asteroid. <laughs> it's, are you telling me he was standing in space <laughs> on an asteroid with one thumb out? Oh, this is an unreliable narrator thing. Everything you said is not true. You don't know that. I think that might be just literally how we end the episode (laughs) I think it was funny I'm the easiest person to shop for. You know what I want? Bean? <laughs> that too. Well, you know the other thing I want? Is it credits? It is credits, as you know. I guessed. It's what I ask for every month. Every month? Whoa, that's too many Christmases. Not for 
the credits. I lost the metaphor. Anyway, we have music that we use on the show. We need to give credit for. Uh, first, we have Your Reality, Future Based Remix from Doki Doki Literature Club by the Musical Ghost. We have Morning Thinker, an arrangement of Thinker from Armored Core Four by Overclock Remix, and The Sound of the Galaxy, an arrangement of Freedom's Progress from Mass Effect by Overclock Remix. Wow, I said them all. Wow, you know all of them, and I know none of them. That's okay. It's not your job. Yeah, but you know what is my job? I'm gonna read the names. Yeah, who wants to start? You do. Name is the first name. <laughs> no, it's not. That's just the top oh. of the column in Excel. <laughs> this okay, is I was confused. <laughs> I was Fuck like, off. is it somebody but their name is name? You can tell because they're in alphabetical order. Well, then you need to start because, uh, no, I'll do it. A female presenting boob hat. That's t- a timely Tumblr reference. A mountain biking vampire witch from the future. Damn, that sounds cool. I'm pretty sure that is a reference to one of my favorite drag queens. Tweet me and tell me if that is an uh reference, please. Okay. Adora, conduit of She-Ra herself. Good show. Aki Savalinen. Albert West. Aaliyah. Alex Vepra. All Wojek are bastards? It, the Wojek are the police for the Boros Guild and Ravnica. It's a long sure. story. Andrew Birmingham. Andrew Falu, conduit of mediocrity itself. Andrew Fedjay. Conduit of it's pronounced Fedji itself. Oh, fuck that owned. I should have read ahead, huh? Uh-huh. Andrew Grothin. Andy Harkins. Man, they could just get us at any time with the pronunciation now. They're really going to get us. Uh, Anime Jesus. Anna. That's your cat. No, damn it. Also, Anna the cat, conduit of goblins. <laughs> what the fuck? God, they know us so well. Anthony, patron of Dora. Hey, what's up, Anthony? Uh, Arjun de Koenig. Artemis BJJ Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Bristol. Oh my god, I love you, Ashley. Ashley, snow, just Ashley. <laughs> nice. Instead of no, just Ashley, it's festive. I know, it's very good. Aston Yeetsky, <laughs> conduit of eat a whole ass. <laughs> Is that my catchphrase? I do t- tell people to eat a whole ass a lot. You say it a lot. Yeah. That's why I say it now. It's your fault. Yeah, sorry. Uh, August Rue. Austin Dorksky, come on. <laughs> Austin Yorkie, conduit of Spank Me Daddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, can I give that to one more time? Austin Yorkie, conduit of Spank Me Daddy. <laughs> okay. You can't even say it without your voice. I, I can't. I'm, I'm cringing. Austin Yorksky died to pinwheel twice. You didn't even change it for Christmas, and you're still wrong. Einar Johansson. B Duck underscore Quack. B Ray Echo. Bleakier. Brady, conduit of failed murder. Brady, no! <laughs> well, it's better failed than succeeded, Brady. So True. Brendan Williams. <sighs> Come on, Brent. Brent. <laughs> dick, 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 dick. He just cock goatly. <laughs> they, they have too much power now. We have to do something. Buster Muffin Half. <laughs> Oh, it's still on. good. Cameron Abbas. <laughs> I get a large pizza with pineapple mushroom ranch on the side. <laughs> and they ran out of space. <sighs> nope, it didn't finish the word, so your ranch is going to be on the pizza. Yeah. Chris Walling. Cr- Christ kind Terrian, conduit of stolen. <laughs> I'm confused. Christopher <laughs> Hake. Christopher Charlow. Clark Westfield. Cody Jackson. Condiment of cucumber itself. Damn, I didn't even read it right the first time. Conduit of perfection itself. That's the dragon. Oh, this is good. Congratulations on Morgan, a big Dale of your skillfully, your skillfully, fuck, hilarious show. It's all our names. Good job. <laughs> it really is. Coram, there is no charm equal to tenderness of heart. Is that a quote for something or you just felt poetic there, Coram? <laughs> I bet that's a quote for something. Uh, Cormac, conduit of same. Yeah, same. Counterfeit. Uh, Dar- Daria Morgendorfer. Is that Daria's last name in the show Daria? I don't know. David Page. Dawn. Dawning Frost. Dennis Bankson. Dennis Pancake Detlefson. Devin, conduit of evolution. Dylan L. Don't ask for whom the Bozogs. Bozogs for thee. You got the most fun ones this, this month. I, I really like. am. Dorian, conduit of self destruction. Grayson. Oh, the biggest mood. Uh, Dr. Tao. Dr. Goatman. Dragon in the server room. <laughs> Drinking Guard 4, No A's Return 2019 by Yoko Taro, Conduit of Yoko Taro. Can I kickstart that, please? Dylan. <laughs> East Atlanta Santa. <laughs> Sub Santa. Ebrend, the prisoner of Tosca Ban. Ecorin. 
Elderly goose, conduit of nobody can kill elderly goose. Wait, is someone trying to kill elderly goose? Don't kill a goose. Is that what the failed murder row was before? Oh no, Brent, stop. Oh my god, there's a whole fucking plot going on in here. Eleanor and Anante sees Periton. Eileen. Emma loves to cuddle moose. Is mo- moose the name of a cat or a dog or is it a, or is it a full, moose? Ass, full ass moose? Either way, all good. All good. And Diego Vandane. Erwin Le Lagadec. Ethan Lawrence. Extellaris. Fabian got that dank. Oh no. Yeah. Fabian, to keep it away from her. No. Florian H. Francois V. George E. Jody Fisher the Fourth. God or Satan. Grimlock. Happy Halloween to everyone. Kiefer Lowe. <laughs> Harley Astor. Harrison Andrew. Hedron Master. Highway to Mel. I read a Xandra light novel and transformed into a patron. I'm sorry, Austin. I love your pretentious storytelling. Thank you. Ingemar Gremmen. Uh, Ink Drop the Chondra, Conduit of Slime and Ooze, ready for season nine? Is that the slime season? I've written a lot of checks about future seasons that I'm not going to be able to cash. I don't know what season nine is supposed to be anymore. Oh, no. Isaac, Conduit of Gavel, Gavel, Gavel itself. Good job, Isaac. Mm-hmm. James Neely. Jamie. Janiac, Conduit of Wishing Everyone a Happy Unicorn Dance Party. Aww. Okay. Jaspel, Conduit of Christmas Fluff Balls. Jay Logan, Conduit of Queerness Itself. Jealous Goddess Cosplay. Jeff Clark. Jen. Jingle Yams. Aw, yam. I love yams. John Carey. John Potts. I didn't say it this month, did you notice? Oh, you didn't. I'm proud of you. John Barnett. <laughs> Joseph Tombrello. Josh Mosier. J.P. Green. Juman Jack Frost. Julian Phillips. Just a Jester. Just a Griff McTravel Roy. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Jorgen Indie Monster, conduit of name butchering Wayne McFord. Kara Stonehouse. Caster UK. Kate, conduit of instant regret. N- nothing from you this month? I definitely expected the same there. Uh, no, it's, yeah, that's what the silence was for. Okay, Keller Automat. Ken Firstal. Kevin Dobbins. Killer Cotton Shizno. Kitty Foe. Carito Prime, conduit of restless leg syndrome. Kyle Badsvik. Lana Seawolf, Lady of Bones. Levy the Goblin Dude. Lily Kedge, conduit of stay tuned. Lindsay Pankhurst, conduit of two peanuts for walking <laughs> down a street, one. That's the Pulp Fiction joke, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> My memory is not good. Okay. Anyways, Logion, conduit of fatigue. Oh boy, big mood. <laughs> Lauren, the the three days re-roll, seven days re-roll, 12 days, oh cry, oh Krishmesh, Kates. Luke Powers. M. Joe. Markov needs pangolins. Don't we all? Yeah. The Cult of Gorfanax. Master Rink. Matthew B. Hare. Matthew Schultz. Matthew Weber, conduit of... Oh, what? Oh, sorry. Same. Uh, Matthias Lackets. Ma Jin. Melissa Nielsen. Mel Tish. Mary, actually, Christmas is just as stressful as Thanksgiving flowers. I'm sorry, Mary. <laughs> we can't. We have to be more supportive, Laura. We can't just dunk on people's choice of holidays. Say, yeah, I mean, I get it. Big mood. Mary Chrysler. Michael Groman. Michael Hall. Michael Minkler, conduit of being mispronounced but being okay with it? Fuck. Is it Michael or Michelle Minkler? Oh, I'm bad at reading, I guess. Or it might be Michelle. I don't know where the emphasis goes. Well, I guess they're okay with it. Midlife stasis. Miko from Finland. Mistletoe is spilling out of every orifice of that's, my body. No, that's too much mistletoe. <laughs> is it mistletoe p- poisonous? Get it out of your body. No. Okay. Morgan Rapp. Nicholas Dominic. Nina Pearson. Noah Sudret. Notorious Christmas conduit of ho, ho, ho itself. Paul Mullen. Possum Kingdom Refugee. Pruitt Holcomb. Quench the Void. Random conduit of daddy issues. Oh, no. Rasvita. Razumi Yazura. Richard G. Coles. Robert Dakin. Rule on the flutinous tutinous condiment of nitpickery. They're really fluting on me. They love to. S. Kearney in Big Mech made of scarves. <laughs> <laughs> Salad I'm child. St- I'm stealing the mech made of scarves for next season. That sounds Sa- very warm. Sam Bultitude. Sam Zanowitz? 
Zdenowitz? It's Polish. Zdenowitz? Zdenowitz. You did it. Satin cloth, the Christmas sloth. Oh! oh my god. That's cute. Scott going to the store for milk. Scott not telling. <laughs> Scott who stole my name for a joke coming. <laughs> oh god, the Scots are going at it. Scotty Vilhard. The only behaved Scott, apparently. Mm-hmm. Sean Lyonsberg. Sean, the host of Funk Dunk Plays. Simmons, conduit of irrational fandom. Simmons, you put your life in our hands and we pronounced your name like adults. I want you to know it was <laughs> we hard We did for our us. best. Shane Sedgwick. Shane Ware, conduit of ethical hedonism itself. Shocking Link. Sir Octopus, conduit of chival- chivalrous cephalopods. Snowfall Frost did nothing wrong. Who's... Somebody had to do something wrong. Every month, nobody did anything wrong. Someone did. I have to know. Sai Wreath, uh, spelled in a very festive way. Thank you. Sydney Marzing. Take me home, country roads, to the place where I belong. Audience. West Virginia. <laughs> Audience, you can make her sing every week. Think about these dark powers you've been given. Mountain Mama. Okay. The Onk More Pork City Watch. The cast of Dungeons the Gathering. The Hadsels. The Precursor. The Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Marietta, Georgia. The Paladin's Wife. The real Austin Yorsky 420. That's a lie. He don't do the weed. I'm the fake Austin Yorsky 69. And you can be the real Austin Yorsky 420. Tim. Tim Lutton. Toby Gleason Stack. Toshiro Kuru, editor of Attack on Dice. Transient Passerby. Shayness. Victoria Melito. Vinny, conduit of queer fashion itself. Viscount Ronaldo Skittles Bumbershoot Unicorn. Is that Leon? It is absolutely not. Leon would not support me with a gun to his head. Are you kidding me? Oh, Leon. Are you out, are you out of your mind? I don't know. <laughs> Vizzy Huggles, keep up the great work, y'all. Thank you, Vizzy. Will you be my friend? <laughs> this is very forward of you. <laughs> oh, this is calling us out in the fucking credits. <laughs> Ziphosaurus. Z23619. We did it. Was it less than 15 minutes this week? Let me check. No. Damn. Uh, I mean, technically it is. We fucked it up again, Lauren. It'll only be 15 minutes in like a few seconds. So we were technically under. We were not. Uh, thanks to Conrad. Uh, he's at Conrad Zimmerman. Laura's at Laura K. Buzz. Chris. Rollo T. Larius. Patreon.com slash weekly manga recap. Kotaku.co slash UK. Uh, of Horse. It's a podcast. About Bojack Horseman. Sure is. I'm at patreon.com slash Austin Yorsky. I'm on the internet. You can find me. Rargalicious cats. They're good. Sometimes. Sometimes they're bad. Often they're bad. They really like to go into the garbage can. What are they doing in there? Get them out. Eating. Mm-hmm. That's why they're chunky. Oh, that's cute. Subscribe and comment and all that stuff. That's cool. It's Christmas season, so... Happy holidays? What are you going to get to other people on the show for Christmas? Uh, I'm not going to cry on the recording. Okay, who's that for? Is that for me? I guess that's for you. Okay, what about Chris and Laura and Conrad? I'll try not to get them killed. That's fair, right? That's like showing up to the that's like showing up to the party and being like, I brought myself. Like that Yeah, no, the gift this year is me. You are all welcome. <laughs>